Jamming. We jamming. Uh, uh, uh. Isn't that the best music? Uh, don't you guys just love... You guys, you want to go back to the weight screen? Should we just go back? Can we, yeah, can we just go back? Forget to, this, dude. We don't need to, we don't need to play anymore. Let's just listen to this music. <laughs> this is great. Hey, welcome back to All the right. Champion Circuit. We're just messing around. My name is Rain Day. This is High Res Pretty Hair. We're ready to go for you here at the Paladins Champion Circuit. Set three of the day. We've That's seen right. Eager actually fall to match point, who are 3 0 at the top of the table, yeah, taking cool. down them in a uh, very contested set. Then we also saw actually Eager fall back and then take a, uh, an objective, a set off of Spawn Kill. That's right. So that was really impressive by them to get the loss early on and then still come out strong without any hesitation. And now it's time to see Spawn Kill face up against Mutiny. Voice is Mutiny here. Going to be the, the bottom two seeds here coming in for the Champion Circuit on the North American side of things. The first game will be played on Jaguar Falls. Uh, we can go ahead and get straight on into game here, though, and just break down uh, some of these team comps coming into this one. So, on the side of Spawn Killed, you will see Rovenik again, used to playing the Bomb King. He's now on Victor. So, we'll see the Russian come out, throw a couple of those grenades with that Grenadier build. It looks like, actually, I'm not sure if he's really running that, which is very interesting. El Zulu, he's going to be on the barracks. So, finally, the healing station will come towards the side of Spawn Killed. Prince Danny TV favoring the Cassie today. Graham will be on Buck. And Rovenik, oh, like we mentioned, actually, Rovenik's there. Grapple will be on the Yanks. The Barrack Yanks staying together every single game so far. That's right. Their opponents today will be Mutiny. Mackers is going to be on Pip this time, uh, playing that Drogos today will be Contastic. And Droxus will be played by Kenjitin there. Fernando is going to be played by Sirachan. His pocket healer today, the Grok, is going to be played by Nistacuti. And this acuity actually showing that Grok has a lot of value in this meta, although he's a, a favored healer by a lot of teams. Some teams don't like him, but some teams really do. And so he's going to find his answer right now. He's got, the, wow. he's got the slow, and what great damage coming out. The utilization of the group on there, and Nista Cutie and Squad are going to go ahead and let Mackers get the first blood on a Rovenig. A great play by Mutiny coming out strong with a nice fire spit from Drogos, a nice chain lightning from Grok, and just combining that for the ultimate punishment. Yeah, missed a little bit of a missed time there on that heroic leap there. Sirachan able to get healed up with that healing totem. Now Nista Cutie moving forward. Prince Danny's able to find the pick, though, onto Contastic. Nisty Cutie's going to be forced out of this one here. Going to be forced to give that positioning up to spawn kill. Prince Danny's Hominus Trello takes the healing totem out, but it's not enough. Kenjitin comes in to save the day there, oh, wow. cleaning up Prince Danny. Now with a double kill cleaning up, El Zulu trying to keep things going for his team. Mackers credited for that kill onto Graham. Nisty Cutie keeping everyone healthy there on the back line. I actually really love what Nisty Cutie's doing. He's really focusing the Ying clones. He seems, it seems like his positional awareness is really strong, oh. Nick. Although he gets taken down by the blast from Rovenik, that burst from the grenade is going to be enough to take down almost anyone. Mutiny go ahead and turn things on spawn kill and take this first point with relatively a, not a lot of contest. Yeah, keeping the heat on is Sirachan, making sure this, this point stays rolling. It's important to kind of snowball. When you've got the momentum, momentum is a real thing in sports as well as esports. And right now, Mutiny are trying to keep that going for him. Nistacuti with a great healing totem there. Going to keep Sirachan topped off. And this Fernando is honestly the one that's pressuring out spawn killed right now. He's getting some great fireballs. Zero Chan is keeping the pressure on his team, on the enemy team, making sure that they know he's always there. You could be in an engagement with Pip. You might be in an engagement with Androxus, but you get you better look out for my fireball because I'll be throwing it with you. Also, he's got the increased charge distance, which allows him to maneuver a little bit easier and get around these corners. And that shield, perfect placement there by the Fernando, hoping to let his DPS dealers do some damage but no one's still able to break through past the bear uh, turrets. Contastic gonna get taken down there before his Dragon Punch lets him fly. El Zulu gonna clean up Sirachan before he can get off the ground here. And now all of Mutiny is being forced back. Prince Danny cleaning up Nista Cutie. Kenjitin's still healthy, but for how long there? Rovenik takes him down. Contastic, the only one alive on the side, as well as Mackers, but it doesn't seem that he's been able to have as much of an impact as he would have liked. The two healers coming out, for Mutiny, taking the approach that they'd like to keep their team topped off and do some damage, but not as much as taking a little bit more of a heavy only DPS and going for more of the hybrid decision to grab Pip into that lineup. What do you think about that, Nick? Yeah, I think Pip brings a lot of good utility. He's not quite the main healer there, but he's able to bring this ancient mojo here to kind of bust up the point right now. All things told, though, the fight's starting to break out here. It's going to be Rovenik cleaning up 
Mackers there, Prince Danny cleans up Kenjiton El Zulu, takes down Siracha, and Nistacuti finally able to answer back onto Graham. But for how long? Here comes the fire spit damage. It's gonna be good here, putting out a lot of good poke onto Spawn Kill. But Mutiny still taking the worst end of this fight. I do like the way El Zulu is being aggressive and forcing them back. What does he have to lose? They've got the payload push. There's only 15 seconds. If he can get one going? more kill, he's going to be able to wipe it. Zero Chan a little bit out of where his teammates need him to be. He's trying to, I think, apply that flank pressure we saw happen yesterday with Bugsy on Fernando, forcing them to switch their eyes and move away from this payload. But is it working? We'll see. They do take down the barricade. That was huge. That's right here. Now they're going to have the advantage, the man advantage in this fight. That fire spit's going to miss, though. Sirachan trying to hold this corridor down. That shield's going to drop here. Kenjiton getting poked very low on this Androxus, but Kintastic able to take down Graham here, trying to focus down this Alingu and cut off that healing right now. But they need to do more. They need to find these kills. Rovenik answers back, picks up Kenjiton, but he's in a rough spot. That Victor has nowhere to go, nowhere to run, and nowhere to hide. He gets credited to Mackers for that kill. Prince Danny keeping the heat and the pressure on Mutiny right now. They're trying to stay alive here, have that Tempest available to him. That's gonna be the next big swing factor in this fight. And he's also got the Accursed Arm. Don't forget about that. I think Mutiny want to use it and get the value from it here. He's going up in the air, but he decides that he's getting pressured too much by Rovenik, who's done that. He's seen that play before, but have you seen this one, big boy? The damage from the revolver is too much for the Russian to handle, and he's going to get nice taken play. down. Nice play by Prince Danny TV to take down Mackers. Nistacuti is gonna take down Prince Danny TV, though, in the process, and Kenjinton is staying alive and uh, providing a ton of pressure, but not enough to get away from Robinick and Grapple. And yeah, Nistakuti finds one, but he's all alone right now. Sirachan is separated, drops a healing totem, but instantly taken down. Sirachan, unaware of all this happening, is nowhere near the payload, and that pay the defense will succeed for spawn kill. They will hold for now, tying things up one to one. So what was interesting, Nick, is if I'm just watching this, I just see Sirachan away from the payload as the time is ticking. Yeah. The conversation had to have been, I may need your help here because Definitely. I'm dying and the payload is pushing and you have a full health bar. You're not here. And immortal. Exactly. So the conversation either didn't happen or he just didn't listen. This is where I think we oh, would not have okay. seen match point or eager have Five, the faltering four moments that three, really could change two, a fight. If they kept that alive, if he allowed them to get back in, they had the accursed arm coming in uh, from Kenjinton, that could have been a huge swing. They could have pushed that 2-0. Yeah, taking a look at the scoreboard here, we see that all the ultimates are available here for Mutiny. So they're luckily putting all the eggs in the basket of this capture point fight here in the next round. A lot of times if teams don't have the confidence to drop those ults, you put yourself at a very big disadvantage if you kind of uh, blow your load there to try and convert but don't really get it there, then you come to the capture point fight with nothing. Yeah, that's true. So maybe he didn't want to use that ult, but still I think he could have been better for his team just staying by the payload and keeping it alive for just a moment. Even if he didn't want to take that risk, they might have all just been saying, you know what, I know that's the call you want to make. Maybe let's just ride this out and we'll go into the point with both of our ultimates there. They've got the immortal. I don't like the way that happened with Rock, though. He, he didn't save his Fernando when he really needed it, and he didn't use his ultimate on the Point. That was the issue. Grok's ultimate, it slows. It allows teammates to get some movement speed and heal them. And it also provides not a lot, but consistent DPS that would force them off the point. He used it in the corridor. That's right. There were a lot of good kills coming out in that last fight from Kenjiton and Kentastic on that Drogos and that Androxus. Finally, finally answers. The barrage is coming out right now from Rovenik here, trying to find some good poke damage. Will force Mutiny back off this point, allowing Barrick and Ying to get settled in and get things rolling again for spawn kill. That's fine, though, because it looks like El Zulu on uh, on the side of, uh, <clears throat> looks like Spunk are going to be able to make everything work. Grapple is there, but he's going to go down very quickly. And now it looks like Kenjinton, Nistacuti, and Squad are able to turn this around. It's 88 for them. It is highly contested, however, and they want to make sure that Graham is nowhere near this point. And it has been captured. Nistacuti and Squad from Mutiny take the objective from Spawn Killed and go up two to one in this game. Fantastic, doing a lot of good work in this fight, as opposed to last round when he was a little bit quiet this time. Definitely showing up on this dragon. Has that dragon punch available to him? This could be a clutch pick here 
to go ahead and get things started for Mutiny right now. Prince Danny Woo! rolling in super deep and is going to get punished for it, gratefully so. Grapple able to find one on to Contastic, trading out now. Both teams taking slugs at each other. Mackers takes picks up Graham. Rovenick answers back on to Cutie, but Rovenick's going to go down here to Mackers. Mackers needs to get that heal off. No, he will fall as well. Kenjitin has returned to the fight, though. 66% charge on that ultimate here. Things are starting to die down. They're going to be forced to fall back and wait for their respawns. He's going to be using his nether step to heal up, but also he's going to use the dragon, uh, actually the orc, to help heal him up with this healing totem. Rovenick on the side doesn't spot out Kenjitin yet, but now he's getting the most effective focus from Buck and Victor, allowing them to actually push up the middle without that buck pressure. So he did do a good job there, just baiting. And now they go into the danger zone, and it is not a good highway to be on. He ends up getting taken down. Graham's going to go back to base. Rovenick gets taken down nice. by Kensington in the air with only 265 health left. He pops the oh, reversal, no. and after a great play, unfortunately goes down. Grapple here seems to have actually been one of the key figures in installing this payload push. He's been getting a lot of kills as the game. That's right, Zero Chan taking point on it. Here comes the temp right now, but it's running into the lockdown. Buckwild has popped as well. Sirachan doing what he can to tank up most of this damage with that Immortal, but he's just too much coming out of spawn kill right now. Rovin accredited for that kill, and now they are surging forward into Mutiny, forcing them back. I like the way Grapple is playing because Ying is a very passive it can seem like a very passive champion right now because you throw out your clones and a lot of the work is done, but he's actually seeking that damage every single opportunity he can. He is never missing a chance to apply significant damage onto a carry like Kenjinton uh, or onto Kentastic on the Drogos. And I like the way that he is providing sometimes the clutch DPS needed to secure a kill and of course healing his teammates at the same time. Now, but Grapple puts himself in a rough spot with that Dimensional Link, and now he's going to be taken down here. This is looking good for Mutiny to be able to convert here. Kintastic coming out with a kill, following up with a Dragon Punch, taking out El Zulu, and it's going to be Mutiny that go up 3-1 to one here in this set. And here's the issue, too. They've got the chicken available. It looks like an Accursed Arm, but it's actually got the chicken. That means that Mackers is going to be able to completely deny whatever point strategy they think is going on on the side of spawn killed mackers just going to chicken that right away and if they follow up on something big like an accursed arm Points it's going to be night it's going to be lights seconds. out now we can take a look at some of the items here the cauterizers are stumbling a car starting to come online for mutiny and that might be what's starting to swing things in their favor here they got a lot of Haven as well. They're very, very Haven centric Three, two, on the side of spawn kill. One. Buck, Prince, Danny, El Zulu, Grapple, all on those characters with that direct damage. Gonna be mitigated out by Haven here. So we're gonna have to take a look and see. You're mentioning that Evil Mojo Cursed Arm combo. That is what's available for Mutiny. I'd be surprised if we didn't see that come out. It's gonna be the right, it's gonna be all about timing. You don't wanna waste it to just get any kill. You don't wanna necessarily use it on a flanker unless he's being so dangerous, but here it is. He wants to use it on the big boy. Graham goes down, and now Rovenix put under a lot of pressure. He's gonna stay alive and actually take down Kentastic, and we'll see the fight continuing to go here. Sewer Chan actually gets taken down by Prince Danny TV, so a double kill there off of the ultimate going on, and Nisticutie seems to just be a little bit dismayed here at that fact, although it did seem to work enough in the favor uh it is not going to be successful enough to get them on to the point and have collapsed all of the big players on the side of spawn kill that they're going to go ahead and take a two to three uh point here and put themselves in a position to tie things up if they push this through that's right so spawn kill starting to fire back here kenjitin's going to be taken down by prince danny actually here he's going to be pushing forward now Romanik trying to take up arms here, boxing out with the Pip, but he's not going to be able to find the kill here. Throws the grenade up onto the high ground, looking for this 1v1, but Pip is so good in the 1v1 scenario, able to sustain himself up. Kentastic combining efforts with Mackers there, able to take out Rovenik. And now Mutiny are finding a bit of a collapse on top of Spawn Killed here. They're looking to collapse, and now Grok goes down. Nistakuti is not going to be in this fight for a minute. He gets it back to base alongside Kenjinton, and now Mackers is the only one left, but I spoke too soon. Everyone on the side of Mutiny is not available to help deal with this payload push and a huge grenade is going to help poke them out before they even get here already at half health and this is looking dangerous and it seems that they want to talk things over a little bit of a pause coming out as we see the pressure so intense already on the boys of spawn kill they know they just lost against eager they need to win against mutiny if they want a chance 
at being involved in this champion circuit at a high That's level. That's right. So Spawnkilt sitting down a point here, two to three. It's worth noting that Mutiny cannot win off this defense. Normally teams will be granted a point for that successful defense, but not in a scenario where it's going to put you at the win. So they need to find one more capture point win if they're going to close out this game. I'm trying to figure out, Nick, if what Spawn Killed is doing is good this round or if Mutiny just messed up. Because mm. Mutiny had the ult advantage. They were pretty aggressive. And they, they used it on that corridor on the left side yeah. that, yes, they, they got Graham. They got Buck, but they probably wanted to get some of the other, like, they wanted Barrack. They wanted Ying in that. Yeah. And they didn't go to the point. They went for the flank. And that was a little odd to me. Yeah. So was this, is this really spawn kill kind of, like, taking advantage of a mistake, really? Or Maybe they, they were just, they were, they were feeling good. A lot of momentum coming out of that conversion there. But you're right. It was only Sirachan and Makas there on the left flank to follow up on that evil mojo. Exactly. We saw the Accursed Arm was available. I would have liked to see Kenjitin there to try and follow up and definitely confirm both of those kills because we saw... After that evil mojo expired there mm -hmm. um, on Z1 Unknown on that victor, he was yeah. able to turn the fight around with Absolutely. all that damage. So that's kind of that's the crux and the danger that comes alongside evil mojo. When you push up to follow up on evil mojo and you don't get it, then you're in a bad spot and everyone just pops back into their normal form and just starts laying Surprise! into Surprise! Out yeah. here, right? <laughs> that's right. And it looks like as the push continues to take place, we are going to see Robinick getting... The, the kill onto Nisty Cutie with the help of Graham. And now he's going to be pressuring out the Fernando as well. El Zulu is not having an opportunity to do much here. But he is going to put his shield up, protect Rovnik just a bit as the barrack on the side of spawn killed as they continue to push. But Prince Danny TV will take down Contastic as well as Contastic taking down Graham. But again, they get the big budget kill for all those expenses of a full ultimate charge onto Buck. And that is not where you want it to be. You need to get the key. You need to get the barrack. They haven't hit their key targets. A barrage is so needed here. But he gets out of it because he knows death is right around the corner. And now it seems finally Mutiny have almost stabilized. They need to take Graham out of this fight. He jumps away with a sliver of health. I cannot believe Graham is still alive. But he is somehow. And he's in the back line. And he's going to be coming back to play. Mackers has the chance. Does he use the pip ultimate or does he not? We're all waiting with bated breath to see what his decision will be. This could mean the game, potentially, if they let them back in it with a chance to capture next round. Is he going to hold it, or can they sustain without it? The Fernando ultimate from Zero Chan is there, but Graham, who is not killed earlier on, is still pressuring Mackers. That Pip ultimate still available. Does he need to use it? He hasn't elected to yet, and El Zulu is there, healing up from Healing Station, and the Barricade buys him some much-needed time. The Healing Potion is there, and the Payload could be pushed, but they're not there to contest it. The only one is El Zulu. He gets knocked back, and it's a success defense on the side of spot on mutiny beautiful timing they're coming out from or, uh, from Kintastic there on the Drogos to land that fire spit at the perfect moment to knock El Zulu off of that point and get that successful defense they did not have to waste any ultimates there to go ahead and close that one out so now they have a lot of tools available for them they have that evil mojo we need to see them execute on this much better than they did in the previous round and that could be that could spell curtains for spawn kills. It really could. And, and to be honest, you don't even need an accursed arm with evil mojo. 1,500 health. 1,500. I mean, two shots with an androxus nearby, that's going to do it. Five, we didn't mention this also, four, is that last time three, when the evil mojo two, took place on that yeah. corridor, they didn't kill Rovenik. They killed Buck, but they allowed Rovenik to get back, and his DPS actually helped change the fight with Prince Danny TV. So if they can get a kill on a Rovenik, I think it would be a worthwhile ult and get that large victor pressure there. Sir Chan goes out, and he's actually zoning in front, and now they have Ying there. The shield is there, and this is a great time to do it if you want it. Prince, Danny TV, and the squad are keeping spread out, but this is perfect. This is where they are, but no one's there to follow up. There's just, there it is. There's the bearing. El Zulu goes down. That's exactly what they needed. Prince, Danny TV smartly stayed away from the point. Did they take the Ying? Yes, Grapple goes down. Kinjinton got the Ying, so that's the kind of value we wanted to see Mutiny get if they were going to use that Pip ultimate. And again, Pip showing how strong he could be as a hybrid class and how dangerous those chickens are if you're one of them. Here comes the barrage, though, from Rovenik. Sirishan moving forward to pressing them out. Buck Wilds coming through. Mackers going to be feeling the heat from that one, but the waitlist is so good, he's not able to find any follow-up shots. Here comes the Dragon Punch right now. Mackers trying to keep himself alive. Put some good damage onto Rovenik before going down. Rovenik, it's going to be enough poke as he falls down to Nistacuti's follow-up damage. They're trying to get around the corner. Grapple 
Hooks up, picks up Kintastic though on the, the back side of things, but it's still Mutiny able to hold this one and take the first game off of Spawn Kill. Oh my god. It just looks like Mutiny had a very good plan here, and we saw Grok come in big time. 65,000 healing out healing a Ying. So Barrick and Ying, that combo, it's the first time I think we might have even seen this combo lose today. Although they did exceptionally well in both stats. Barrick doing a ton of damage, a ton of shielding, and Ying considerably doing a lot of healing. Mackers with 34k, and of course Nistacutie with 65k doing a fantastic job of bumping the healing up, and Surachan doing enough healing to more than double, uh, shielding, excuse me, to more than double what Barrick and El Zulu on Barrick was able to do for spawn kill. So, so far, that's four losses in a row, it may seem like, uh, to spawn killed after losing to Eager in just three games. They go ahead and take on Mutiny and think that it should be an easier walk in the park, but it's not. Mutiny had plans, and Nistacuti with 3,900 credits goes ahead and leads the team to victory. That's right. So for game two, it will actually be played on Serpent Beach now. It's going to be over to the boys of Spawn Kill to try and find an answer here. And it will be Spawn Kill's pick. So Serpent Beach, one of those Temple Ruins variants, obviously, where teams are going to be very well practiced. So I wouldn't place too many eggs in the basket of map advantage or pulling out any pocket strats on this map that, uh, that Mutiny's not going to be able to deal with. I think it's going to come down to both teams' drafts. What are they able to do in this drafting phase? What are they able to take away from Mutiny that was working well for them last game? And, of course, as we get into the game, let's see what both teams have elected to go with in that crucial drafting phase of Paladins. We see now Kenjiton has elected to go with Cassie. Kintastic has elected to go with Drogos. Mackers will be on Pip. Nistacuti on Grok. And Sirachan will be on Makoa, which we didn't see last game. That's yeah, so not too much getting switched up here. Grapple this time going to be on that Ying Bomb King. This time going to be played by Rovin, a very famous player champion combination there. Uh, Prince Danny going to be on Atroxus as well. These are some comfort picks coming out from Spawn Kill. Graham going to be back on his buck. And that leaves El Zulu to round things out Four. as Fernando. So we see the buck Two. and we see One. Prince Danny TV. So very comfort picks for both of these champions. But I'd like to see what Prince Danny TV is able to do. We don't see the Grok. We do see the Grok coming out again on the side of Mutiny, and that worked really well. And I love the initial zone coming out from Bomb King. That's what I like to see. Kenjiton and Cassie. Kenjiton, he was on the Androxus earlier. Prince Chicken. Danny TV. He's going to make sure that Kenjiton does not get the snipe on him Ooh. by getting around the corner. Fantastic oh. is going to take him down, though. And it looks like, wow, there is not a lot of opportunities for any of the members of Mutiny Jeez. to stay alive. Grapple, however, is staying alive very well. Trying to do his thing. El Zulu is there as well. Oh, no, he jumps it, down by himself. It does look like this the, the mutiny squad of healers and Zero Chan on the turtle have just done so well for themselves. Already 36 points on the capture. Finding a lot of uh, picks there and then separating. Oh, misses that nice hook. That would have been pretty pretty hype there. Kenjiton on the high ground. Gets healed up by Mackers and is able to actually survive for the time being right now. Rovinik on this bomb king gets to the back line though and will pick him up there. Mackers trying to do what he can to shut this one down. Finds the shot and will do just that right now. They're just doing such a good job at collapsing and target focusing on the side of Mutiny there. Trying to burn through this Fernando shield. Grapple's going to do what he can to keep El Zulu up here but for how long? How long is the question? The healing totem is up. So Grok knows that. He's going to heal up his teammates inside the Makoa shield. And this is a beautiful way to protect Jeez, it. I love healing. the combination there that went down. All of the teammates went and got inside of it. That was beautiful. That's why Grok is doing so much healing. <laughs> Rovinik, he's going to potentially go down. Ooh. And he does. Thanks Trade. to Kenjinton. And now Graham, he's going to have to show his self right now. This is where it all comes down. The double plays uh, from Kintastic and Graham. Uh, Who is going to get it? Graham oh. goes down. Kintastic gets the better of him. Grok's lightning is going all over the place. But most importantly, it's going on to the enemies. The healing totem, Sirachan, is waiting for him. And this is beautiful play. The coordination nice. with the Grok totem from Mutiny is absolutely what's keeping them alive and well and fed in this game. And Nistakuti making huge plays with this totem, putting it down at clutch moments. Like you mentioned, getting it down under that Makoa bubble just to combine 
for the real bubble of love, keeping his whole team very, very healthy. Finding some clutch kills too. Nista Cutie doing a good job. Grok's damage is nothing to scoff at. It is not. It is not anything to scoff at. It's consistent, right? And that is the point. Just like Fernando, if a Grok is aiming at you and you're dealing with anything and else, killings. it is going to be a problem. Look, he's got the healing totem. Macker's going to want to make his way over there. And as you can see, Macker's had a chance. He did go through it. And now there's an opportunity. Look at this. Nice. What a nice uh, try there. He may clean something up, though. He might clean up Robinick. He's not able to, though. A nice immortal is going to save Robinick's life. But the healing totem will also make this battle very bad for the likes of El Zulu. He's going to have to get out of town and quickly because the police, the orc police, are coming for him. Grok is at the head of that, and he's gone ahead and got his man. Mystic Cutie goes with the kill, and he's going to help Kenjinton take down Graham as well. And now Androx is forced to get out of the fight, and this is all mutiny. Mystic Cutie's been alive for so long here. On a 12 strike and now beautiful reactionary ghost walk there to keep himself up through that. But here comes the King Bomb right now. Rovenik just settles for one target on the high ground. That pip going to be out of this fight. Buck Wild's coming through as well here. Trying to find some kills is Graham in the back line. Niski Cutie finally going to be taken down. Double kill for Graham, but off the back of that ultimate. Trying to hook oh! him off the map, and he does. Zero chance probably going to go down here, but he's taking Graham with him, which is a good thing. But he's shell spins away the fireball. Finally able to clean up that kill. El Zulu with a nice clutch fireball because he would have been able to stay alive. Let's see if Surajan actually had on himself some veteran. He did not have veteran, so he wouldn't have been able to heal up as fast as he probably would have needed to. But that card would allow you to do so. And now, looking at this next fight, both teams sizing each other up. There's still 40 seconds left in the push. So it all comes down to this. A hook potentially would have gotten what he needed, but it wasn't there. And he actually almost jumped off of the point there. He's still trying Damn. for it. This is a good spot. He's five seconds left. He can try again, but he's got to stay alive. And that's not an easy task with Bomb King and the Ying clones being able to be shattered right near where you're fighting. So he instead elects to silently push this payload, and El Zulu is forced away from this fight and to deal with him. And look at that. He gets thrown off, but the charge will keep him on. Yeah, Spawn Kill doing a great job in that last engagement to split up Mutiny. Mutiny. Kind of uh, letting them get the better of positioning there, getting kind of sandwiched a little bit. Going for that hook, maybe a little bit too much off the edge there. Robin cleaning up a double kill in that last fight. Just not really meaningful kills there going down. Just a couple of last second credit farms there heading into this next round. We're all tied up at one to one here. We see this Dragon Punch is available here, but we're able to take a look and see just what else is available. We're going to see that evil mojo on the pip. Nista Cutie almost ready to go on that Tempest here. A lot of... Uh, Key items coming out, going for a lot of those level 1s, level 2 cauterized, just now coming through for Mr. Mackers. Mackers, Mr. Mackers, looking to get seconds. that Volpine action going on, as Volpines do so well, turn people into chickens. And uh, he wants to make sure that that's a consistent theme in his Five, gameplay, because four, that's going to make him three, much more effective two, than he currently four. has been. 3-3, three and three, not the best stat line, but he's definitely been supporting his team. And that is the role of a support. He's looking to find a nice avenue here. They're going for the outside flank, but we didn't see that work too well last time. Now he's trying to find his target. Zero Chan is there helping out the zone, and there's the chicken. He's looking for one. They want to get the Fernando in the nice. queue. That's Follow absolutely up. what they needed. They knew where the Fernando was. They got the big health tank out of the way, and that is key. Brit Danny in the air. He's trying to heal Cursed Arm, but he puts himself oh, so stationary baby. that Nista Cutie, with the help of one shot from Macker's Potion Launcher, is going to take him down, and that was perfectly executed. That is a textbook fight coming out from Mutiny right now. Triple Evil Mojo following up. I believe they were able to confirm two out of the three kills following up shortly thereafter on the third. Spawn kill returning back into this fight here, but they're, they've are they got nothing here. Prince Danny's going to be forced into that reversal here just to try and break that entrance, and then he's going to be forced up onto the high ground. Nether stepping away. And Nick, it seems like Mutiny have finally figured out what they want to do. Like, I'm very impressed with these fighting. I'm very impressed with their team fights. I'm very impressed with some of the solo play. Let's see if I can be impressed with their survival here. It seems like they do somehow all make it. The gods are with them today, and it's not going to work out for Rovenik on his clutch Bomb King, which he's so comfortable on. Things just haven't gone the way of the Wub Wub Man. Yeah, Kinchiton gonna find that first critical pick here onto Prince Danny Graham, likely to go down as well. That fire spit around the corner is gonna be good here. Rovenick coming back into this fight. Will pick up Nistikiti before going down to Kenjiton Sirachan with a clutch hook mid-air onto El Zulu. Takes him out as well, and things are looking good for Mutiny. Mutiny with the capture point, 2-1 to one again. Nice. And now, all of a sudden, Mutiny are just showing dominance. We were trying to figure out 
who was going to take control. But Mutiny, they've said, put me in, coach. I want to win this third seed spot and show that I still have a chance in this champion circuit to potentially make it to High Res Expo. It's a long way away, but this is exactly what they need to do to start it up. Makoa has the Ancient Rage available. He's not going to use it, though, and elects to go into the shield because the pressure is significant from his back line. Yep, Mr. Cutie is here to pocket heal him up. Going to go ahead and take down that Ying Clone here. Doesn't have the veteran available to him, so we'll be likely just waiting it out with that out of combat regen. There's the healing totem from Mr. Cutie to top him back off. Ancient Rage is available here. We saw the huge play that Kami last week was able to make with Ancient Rage coming down this final avenue on the Serpent Beach here. So we'll see if Sirachan is able to do something similar. Mr. Cutie and Sirachan forced back here. There's Robinick, though. He's going into the fight. He says, come over here. I don't like it. But guess what? McCoa's got that same phrase as well. He says, you want to get over here? I'll show you what get over here means. I took this from Mortal Kombat, if baby. If you insist, let's go ahead and have a nice close oh. talk. And there's Fernando. He doesn't get full thrown off the ledge, but it's just about as close as it needed to be to put some significant pressure. The Ying clones are there, but Zero Chan with the Makoa is so on point with these pulls, these hooks, the shell spin to add the extra damage. The illusion, the dimensional link, will be the only thing that saves her life. And uh, it just looks like Zero Chan is really unstoppable on this turtle. Yeah, threading the needle there. Prince Denny going to get over the water there where he can be safe floating for the time being. A Christian Arm is going to come out here trying to find the poke onto Mackers there, but we'll get no kills for that one. Graham able to answer back onto Kenjutsun here. Zero Chan getting very low. He's just going to be forced to almost jump off the map now, almost in Ancient Rage, not electing to go into that El Zulu and Prince Danny credited with those two clutch kills to keep things alive for spawn kills. Spawn kills feel like they've, they've been so close to having a lot of rhythm. There's players that we know, Prince Danny TV, Rovenick, they've been big players in the scene for a while, but it just seems like their team hasn't meshed yet. And Mutiny is really showcasing that. It wasn't necessarily just eager. It seems like Mutiny are playing like a coordinated unit, and you could tell when teams have that going on. And it just doesn't seem like spawn kill has been able to get into that rhythm. So my question is, Nick, how do they do that? And what are they really missing here? Maybe they're fighting into uh, the strategy of Mutiny a little bit too strong, grouping up for that evil mojo. They don't want to give up those triple evil mojos right now, but we are in overtime right now. Graham on the backside trying to keep Mackers at bay, but he only needs one more shot. Triple kill for Kintastic on the front side. Mutiny might be able to convert this one here. They have Sirachan rotating into this fight with the Ancient Rage, and that is a beautiful tool for closing out payload pushes. There's so much potential here in this fight. Who knows what is going to happen? I want to look at Nistakuti. He goes oh, down, though, and that's going to be tough. The Ancient Rage, however, is popped by Makoa. Oh, no, it's not. It's still saved, so he has this opportunity to go and increase his health by a significant amount. There's the chickens. Oh my god, Mackers, you god! Taking the chickens into this fight and grapple. He's gonna go down, but it does look like Rovenick is gonna go down as well. Mutiny want to get this one in, and they do! Getting the successful push. Thanks to Beautiful. Mackers and the chickens. Beautiful chicken ult there, but also a great reaction coming out from Sirachan. He pops the Ancient Rage to stay CC immune so he doesn't get stunned by the King Bomb. So Rovenick goes in, finds a good King Bomb onto a couple members of Mutiny, finds the stun, but isn't able to get that follow-up damage with that turtle just beating on him in Ancient Rage. He's able to clean up the kill, and they're able to find the conversion Mutiny going up 3-1. to one. And Mackers already at 20 seconds. for his ult, but... Talk about the Grok ult, the Drogos ult, the Cassie ult being available, the Talk Fernando the ult. ult. Uh, not the Fernando ult, excuse me. That would be the Yank. That would be the Makoa's ult just Makoa got used ult. there. Is, well, I, I do want to talk about Grok's ult, though, because Nistacuti is using this beautifully to actually heal his teammates. So many people are still stuck in the mindset of using damage, Grok's right? ult offensively. As the damage is there, but it, I would say the slow is honestly more impactive than that 200 ticking damage there. And he has been able to save his teammates and swing some pretty clutch fights with that Tempest. He's also doing a great job. Here it is. Go. Look at the healing. There it is. He's keeping two teammates alive. Here's the accursed arm. It's a nice counter. But is it going to be enough? Nisikuti's still in the fight. The Ghost Walk will immune him for long enough. And Rovenick is there with the Bomb King. And you never want to be the line of his sight. That is not where you want to be to stay alive. El Zulu, he's going to get a little bit of pressure. But it's going to be helpful thanks to the Yin clones keeping him alive with Grapple's awareness of the map. Throwing those out for the big Spanish tank. And now there is not too much left. Prince Danny TV and Spawn Kill have decided that they are not out of this yet, Nick. That was quick. That was clean. That was a Spawn Kill we haven't seen. How, how are those rhymes for you? <laughs> Spitting bars here. Spawn Kill 
Able to capture that one very quickly there. Grapple just sitting on the point the whole time that fight was going on. And that's really what Ying is able to do. She's able to provide her effective healing from such a great range that she can do two things at once here. And now she's just seeing just that as she's pushing forward with El Zulu, keeping him healthy. Spawn killer absolutely rolling, but maybe a little bit too quickly here as no one is pushing the payload currently. And here it is. El Zulu trying his best, but he's very low. Veteran will heal him up super quick. Look at that health increase. Back to 5,700 before you know it. And this payload has been pushed very far. I, this is great. So far, spawn kill. Got to be really happy with how this point turned out. Nick, what changed? I mean, we were talking about it. You were saying that there was they, a really good immortal coming out from El Zulu. Was that really what alive. it is? That really helped swing the fight because we saw the clutch Tempest in there right. to get everyone healed back up from mutiny, but everything was just shut down for four seconds. No one was going to die on the side of Spawn Killed with that immortal. And now it looks like we've got Prince Danny TV on Spawn Killed. Looking for a bit of damage. Graham is there as well, but the fire spit from Drogos. Double tap. It's going to clean up Prince Danny. Rovenik is there, and now Kintastic. He's got an issue because Rovenik's got his eyes on him, but he's not able to stay alive. Now on the side of, it looks like, oh, wow, Nistacute is still keeping everyone alive. The pressure is real. Grapple. He's going to have to force out. I thought the push was potentially there, but it looks like they're going to smell him out. So Mutiny, they're not allowing this push to go any farther. They're ready and eager to zone now with 40 seconds left. It will be tough for Spawn Kill to get back into this. That's right. Spawn Kill had a really great snowball going on there, but they had nobody pushing the payload. And as a result, they've not even really made much progress here. Still sitting under halfway on what could have been a much, much closer payload push for them. It's just mathematically going to take them longer to push this in now. Ancient Rage is going to be available here. Kenjiton finding the first clutch pick onto Grapple, shutting down that healing immediately. The Ancient Rage not going to be popped, though, and that front line are going to drop. Look at this. Here is the King Bomb. Oh, and Kenjiton! Cuts him down. He says, don't bring that around my town, baby. I'm Cassie, and I know what to do with this bow, and it's just shooting bombs that are rolling at me slowly. The wind-up, we've talked about it. It's so difficult. Kenjin Tin helps to take down Grapple as well. Kintastic and Zero Chan follow up, sweeping El Zulu and Prince Danny TV under the rug, and that is going to be a successful defense on the side of Mutiny. And again, game point for them. That's right. There are going to be a lot of clutch ultimates available for them as well have that tempest they have that evil mojo they have the dragon punch they're going to have scout shortly available i know they have ancient rage there despite not being able to see it there and spawn kills a little strapped for ults right now they don't have they don't have that king bomb available to them they're not going to have that buck while available to them in the first fight they might be able to get it to them later depending on how much work graham is able to do it'll be really interesting uh to see where we are in terms of pip using his ultimate and that is going to really tell me exactly how well this team has come together because Mutiny, they've done it once. If they can do it twice, if they can do it three times, that starts to say, well, we are really coming together as a unit. There's a Fernando. No need to use the chicken ult. He's about to be killed anyways. Prince Annie is in the air, so they just want to get around cover, and they've done a great job at that. They smell Bomb King coming out as well, although Graham is still uh, staying alive as well as El Zulu. It doesn't look like they're too much of a threat. Grapple's so low, and Macker's got super isolated now. This could be bad for Mutiny. They actually do not have the same unity as I thought they we're going to now the respawns are coming from Kintastic and Nistacuti oh, no. and this could save the day however it is 54 points and ticking on the side of spawn kill yeah spawn kill making sure to keep that capture rolling despite the fight going on and like you mentioned it's really the team synergy is not there here comes the evil mojo but where is the follow-up right now trying to find shots on the Rovenik will not be able to follow up onto a single kill from that evil mojo mutiny missing the mark with that ultimate El Zulu rolling right now in these team fights finding a lot of kills Prince Danny pins Macros to the wall and this one is looking all spawn kill. Takes down Buck though. Sierra Chan doing a very good job at that, but that should be, unless there's somebody who can contest, and it doesn't look like there is, the ability for spawn kill to tie things up three to three. So we've seen Mutiny come out strong and have the decisive uh, game play be whether Mackers can get the chicken ult off and finish off a few targets, but so far he had no follow up from his teammates. Everyone from Mutiny was so spaced out, Nick. It just yeah, they got it didn't work out for them. Yeah, they definitely got split up a little bit too much there. The only time they were taking convincing wins is when they were fighting together. They have very good team synergy with that Tempest, with that evil mojo. The Cursed Arm is perfect for picking off these lonely targets that Mutiny are just feeding to spawn killed right now.
And there's Robin at King Bomb is available. He wants to use it this time. I'm sure he wants to use it once this game. Because it just seems like it's been so hard to confirm the damage on that lately. He is getting a lot of damage and putting them on a bad position. The Poppy Bomb was completely countered by the Makoa Hook. Prince Danny TV is getting up into the air. He's got nothing to do except actually focus the Grok down, and that's a good task. He's going to have ahead of him because there's Mackers and Kintastic Ooh, in there. What a reversal, wow. though. Going to put Kintastic almost at the spirit point of being killed and forcing him actually out of the fight. Kijitin actually is going to get flanked here, but what a pull. Get over here, says Makoa, and he's just been so on point with these dredge anchors. Thing. That's a spawn kill. They're able to claw their way back in this one. They have the chance to close out this game here and go up 2-0. to oh, That's going to be very big morale hit for Mutiny after playing so well, losing this game, maybe giving it back up to spawn kill, but we'll have to see if they're able to convert here. Searchin trying to get the hook off the map with the charge reactionary. He's going to be so good at El Zulu. Going to keep him alive for the time being. That healing totem actually goes down before the shell shield gets up. He's trying to get another hook off the map there. It will be good. Doesn't even drop him in the water. Just blast him in the face. And here comes the good Tempest to heal everyone back up. I love the way they're playing with these two supports. That's what I was thinking in the game before where spawn kill actually took uh, they ended up taking, I believe, either Grok. Uh, they actually, I don't think they took Grok. They had the potential to take him, and I feel like that would have been a very strong pick in terms of being able to contest on the point. That's where they need it. And the clutch control that Makoa is showing to not only displace the right targets, to pull the right targets, and pretty much in this game, any target is the right target, right? Because that displacement just spells death. He's having the wherewithal, along with Nistacuti, to work as a pair that could put the dome shield with the healing turret in it as well. That's right, finding another good hook there on to grapple on that Ying. Nice poppy bomb here, almost knocks Sierra Chan off the map here. Ancient Rage is available, no one from spawn killed is on this point. So it's going to come down all to this on this capture point fight. We will decide the winner of this second game. And let's take a look at the score. Obviously in terms of the ults, oh, ultimates, baby seems to be there. And this is going to mean that there's a lot of counter potential. There's a lot of follow up potential. There's a lot of options for both teams. And Nick, how, how do you think this one's going to go? It looks like actually Mysticuity doesn't Boys have his Grok ultimate. Yeah. That's actually a big deal. He used it there a little bit uh, preemptively in one of those less important team fights there in the previous round. Sitting at almost 50% charge, so he might be able to Five, get it charged up he's, four, if, he's, if he's able to three, find two, a couple of key kills one. and some damage there. But every other available ultimate is going to be on the board right now. That is the single ultimate in the game that is not currently charged. Everything is available, and it's going to come down to who's able to use theirs more effectively. If Mutiny's going to get split up again, or if Spawn killed. Oh, here comes the Evil Mojo, though, trying to find some follow. Mackers finds El Zulu, though. That's going to be one big kill. Cursed Arm is coming out, though, up onto the high ground there. Not able to find any kills. Nistacuti there, shutting him down. The Grumpy Bomb could be good. It's going to be good. On to not just one, but two targets. Ancient Rage is available. He's going to be forced into it, though. Sierra Chan hacking his way through Ying Clones. Cannot find the real one. Cannot find any of his teammates either. Finds one hook onto Romanic, and that will be enough to clean him up. And if he can clean up Grapple, this will be a huge play by him. He's going to shell shield away. No need, because now it's nice. just El Zulu, and he's going to be able to have the counter to that. The Ying clone is going to do its job and heal up El Zulu. What a pull in the air! Zero Chan says, get over here, and now he's going to heal back up with Pip, and with the help of Grox Totem. He's taking a ton of damage, oh, though, wow. and it turns out to be I enough. El Zulu goes into the Immortal. Grapple is here. He's trying to heal up El Zulu, keep his tank alive, and he's doing a great job at that. Applying some damage on a Kinshinton, so the force cannot be reckoned with. Prince Danny TV and Spawn Kill look like they want this point. They've cleared off everybody, including Nistacuti on the side of Mutiny, and all of a sudden, Spawn Kill potentially have turned this around, and taken two, three capture points in a row. It's 94. It's 94 still. There's no pressure. 99. Spawn killed want this. They have one chance to get it. Nistacuti comes out. He's got the ghost walk available. Grapple's still alive. And Nistacuti goes down as well as Macker. Spawn killed could potentially turn this one around and clean up the win to tie things up with Mutiny and even the series 1-1. Yeah, so that 4-3 win there for Spawn killed on the Serpa Beach is going to be huge for them coming back and fighting their way back into this series. Tooth and Claw right now with Mutiny's just slugfest, absolutely trying to get things fought back in their favor right now. Getting over to the scoreboard, we can take a look. Fantastic. Breaking a thousand, a hundred thousand damage there. Kenjitin with 130. This is a, this I was a long game. 2245 is a very long and hard fought game in Paladins. Wow. And again, we see Mystic Judy as the Grok. 58 eliminations, the highest credit score on his team. Mr. Cutie is showing 
when combined, especially with Makoa here, that this Grok can bring a lot to the table. Again, out healing the Ying. And again, Spawn Kill going with the solo healer instead of going for the dual healer type of hybrid that Mackers is bringing. Now, I like why this is working because Mackers, you can see he's already doing as much damage as a Buck. He's doing 95k as well as Buck. He's doing more than the Ying. He's doing not comparable to Androxus or Rovenink, but as much as the Buck, which is pretty much no support and full flank backline, Macker's still able to get 54 eliminations and have 95,000 damage, but add that 30,000 healing on top of everything with even shielding. That's really where the game shifted for me. Macker's providing a perfect hybrid support role, and then also with that huge game-changing ultimate. Buck's ultimate is fantastic, a ton of damage, but you cannot say that chickens are not as good or better because of the fact that if you follow up on them, it's just a basic attack or two, and the whole team is wiped. It forces your team to separate, and it forces, it allows the team who has Pip to have this incredible point advantage whenever his ult is available, and especially with big health targets, it's almost the perfect counter to Fernando. That's right here, and heading into the third game of the series, it will be played on Jaguar Falls here, so we're going to see... Another Temple Ruins variant come out here. It's Spawn Killed and Mutiny are going to be all tied up here one to one. Now, this is the part where we go into loser's pick. So, Mutiny having lost that, or, uh, yeah, Mutiny having lost that game, they're going to be picking this one up here, and it will be uh, interesting to see what comp they elect to go for. We'll just go ahead and get straight into game and just see what that is. It's going to be Rovenik on that Ying for Spawn Kill. Grapple going to be on that Makoa there, playing the Buck this time. That's a nice emote, by the way. I love that emote. You have Look to get that. that through a loot chest, so you got to buy some lucky, chests if you want that one. Lucky, lucky Grapple. Yeah, but Graham will be uh, playing Buck for Spawn Kill right now. Very tanky lineup as El Zulu is going to be on Fernando this time. Rounding things out will be Prince wow. Danny on the Drogos. That's a little odd. We've never seen Prince Danny on that, but hey, I'm sure... He's going to be an exciting carry no matter who he plays. And now it's going to look like Kintastic. He's going to be on the Cassie. Mackers will be on the Victor. Five, Kenjin 10 four, will be on three, the Androxus. Two, Chan on the Barrack this time around. And Nistacuti will stay on the Pip. So he's switching from the Grok. So no matter what, they seem to prefer the Grok. And instead of that, they're actually ending up taking the Barrack and the victor so this is really really interesting they love the game changing ultimate going on here and that is exactly what i believe is going to be so valuable but look at that oh my god prince danny tv showing exactly why he picked up the drogos i'm hyped right now i cannot believe that see you later nista cutie your grok yeah it was pretty good but your pimp so far nothing special because i just knocked it off the map talk about bm that's exactly what I like to see Drogo's doing with those huge fire spits. What a play. What a showcase by Prince Danny. Yeah, Prince Danny using the movement of Drogo's to sneak up, finding a couple of clutch fire spits. That was a really heavy one, but he's going to be taken down. Punished for putting that one out there. Graham going to be taken down there by uh, Kenjiton credited for that kill, but not before he was able to trade out with Mackers. So it is Mutiny that is taking the lead here in this capture point fight. But Grapple and the boys of Spawn Killed are looking to respond here with all five. And of course, just to be clear, as 86 points are there, the contest is real. And it looks like Mutiny are trying to pressure Prince Danny TV. And they've done a good job of it. Kintastic now opting away from the Drogos and actually to pick up the Cassie. So Prince Danny and him seem to have switched a little bit there. Prince Danny favoring uh, Cassie a lot in this game. These champions are drafted in a way that allows teams to pick one at a time, then two at a time, and then reverse that order until they've all picked five. There is no banned phase. So any champion you see used here is not actually banned. They just were not picked or prioritized for their teams. That's why it's always interesting to see the dynamics that they decide to put together. This time we see no Grok, but we still see the Pip. So clearly favoring Pip as their favorite support on the side of Mutiny. Yeah, one good thing that I do like about Spawn Kilt's comp is they have uh, that, that hefty frontline presence in that Makoa, in that Fernando, but they also have the Drogos, which is a lot of times the hard counter to these tanky lineups. And I love also how Drogos is using his mobility to get away. Talk about why Drogos is that hard counter. Uh, because the Dragon Punch is a HP scaling ability, it just does 100% of your target's HP pool. doesn't matter how much, whether it is a 1800 health EV, a 1500 health Pip Chicken, or a 10,000 HP Ancient Raging Makoa, Dragon Punch will kill them 100 to 0. 
Now spawn kill seems to have been finding their rhythm, Nick. They've been doing a great job so far. Grapple now on the Makoa. Taking that away from Sirachan is, I think, a smart move. But Grapple still showing with a five streak that he knows how to play this champion. And Spawn Kill are looking so much better than they had in some of the earlier games. They obviously went and won three capture points in a row. So now, in Mutiny's head, although coming out super strong, they haven't been able to secure it. A Dragon Punch comes down on a contested Grapple. Grapples him over and kills Prince Danny. Actually, Mackers and Mystic Cutie. Slays Prince Danny TV in the process, but Nistic Cutie nice. is about to get slayed himself. That pip not being as effective as that Grok so far. Grapple staying true to his name, finding hook after hook, clutch stuff coming out from this Makoa player right now. Has the Ancient Rage available to him. Might need to use it here as he's taking a lot of heat from these barrage shots right now. He needs to get back into this fight. Another clutch oh! hook up into the air. Brings Kenjitin back down to earth. Still has... The trigger discipline to hold on to his Ancient Rage. I know I would have popped that a long he time ago. Pops out of the Shell Shield, takes out Mackers, looking to snowball things. Double kill for Grapple. He's going huge in this fight right now. Still has that Ancient Rage available to him. 71 HP, but he still oh. doesn't pop it. Oh, Grapple right now died. finally gets taken down. But is this good? Because he died. If he would have stayed alive, the pressure was there. Now it's all up to Rovenik to keep this payload under contest, as well as Prince Danny TV, who's super low. Graham gets in there, but they've got to make sure that they have a chance for uh, Grapple to get back into the fight. Makoa with the huge health pool. El Zulu is there, and now Grapple is coming back. It seems like right in the nick of time. Ancient Rage could be used. He misses his dredge anchor, though, and this isn't the same opportunity yeah. as it was before. He's got five. Barrack is here, and this is not a good time to reach. Go, it was it go. the beauty <laughs> of the trigger discipline, and then it went a little too far. <coughs> yeah, I don't even... 71 HP and he doesn't pop it. That, to me, tells me that the hard call in the comms was just save your ults. Save your ults, save your ults. Don't pop them. Save them for the capture point fight. So we're seeing a couple of ultimates starting to come up, so they didn't even have much available to them. All they have on the table is going to be that Ancient Rage, so maybe it was a good call for them to save it there. We're gonna have to wait and see. Not convinced yet. Not convinced. I think it was so close. The dude. way the Inches. way he held it was beautiful, and the way that he pa had the patience to wait several moments where he could have easily Five, used it was four, great. But three, eventually, two, I felt that that ten thousand health would have helped them to push at that crucial moment and keep the respawn staggered force uh, mutiny, and that's what they ended up losing when he went out of base. They were able to keep it in contest, but weren't able to keep Let's make this five men there. And there is the full pit not going to be able to follow up. The accursed arm, though, still nice. doesn't get anyone, so two huge ultimates not getting value, and now you've got to say that the advantage has to go to spawn killed here with Grapple now popping the ancient range. This is. is what he saved it for, but did he really even need it? I'm not too sure oh, that this yeah. was a <laughs> super threatening scenario. If you're gonna have that type of trigger discipline, I'm surprised they didn't see it there. But again, it's gonna it's gonna build up over time, and rather than saving it, might as well have a couple of ancient rages that you've used throughout the match versus zero. I think that's what he's thinking. Definitely. So not gonna be too many key moments if they're able to capture this one, though. This would be a a, a good opportunity if he had it to be able to shell shield out right now in zone. But he finds a nice hook up on the high ground there, pulling Graham into a bad spot. Barrage is gonna be coming in here. Trying to pressure out a lot of these tanks, and they will do just that. Mutiny, take back zone control at this point. Oh, nice pull as well. Fantastic in trouble. Makoa just showing his presence of mind and his ability to quickly pull the right targets. If he can grab Fantastic here, it's going to be huge. He knows he wants it. He's going to get her, and he's going to take Fantastic down. The Hunter's Daughter is no more, and now Graham, he's on the point, but it's not for long. Makoa's got his sights onto him, and catches it. The Dredge Anchor's available, and you know what's coming next. Grapple, he is showing his Makoa skills, and they are nice. The B for BM comes out. I think he's actually, Nick, he's trying to get a perspective to see if, you know, people are coming around the corner. No, that's what he's trying to do, Nick. It's, it's tactical. That was absolutely clutch play from Grapple there. Keeping El Zulu alive. I don't think maybe you all everyone saw that, but El Zulu was cowering in the corner there with like 10 HP on that Fernando. Clutch hooks coming out of Grapple there. Keeping his teammate safe. Kintastic does find one kill onto Rovenik though to open this team. Find another long range hook though. Onto Kintastic. going to pull the Hunter's Daughter into a bit of a precarious situation right now. Prince Danny is in a rough spot as well. Also very poked out. There it is. He's got some of the, some of the ability to stay alive. Not enough though. And that's going to be the kill. Mr. Cutie will take him down. And Kintastic looking to finish things up as well. Graham 
He's there. I like where he's positioned. He's got a nice ability to see where the damage dealers are going to be, but he doesn't spot him out very quickly, and he gets Ooh. killed in the air by Kinjutin. Nice air shot followed up by the Androxus. There's a minute and 30 seconds left. It's 2-1 to one going uh, the way of spawn actually spawn killed so they've been able to do Stealth super Nando. successfully here uh and keeping the pressure on to mutiny after having a rough time at the start of this match El Zulu now choosing to reveal himself charging up onto that high ground with his shield deployed here trying to pressure out Mac oh! is a big old fireball despite that damage nerf still coming through huge right now in this team fight with that fireball El Zulu somebody needs to get back on this payload cart and capitalize on all the space that has been created with this team fight win and let's talk about Barrack having to get out there early but I love the patience from Barrack he knows he's going to be useless if he goes out there without the support of his team he won't be able to get those turrets up and all of a sudden they come out a super five, but look at the ultimate there and the pull. Zero Janney's almost going to go down. Everyone's turned into chicken smackers. Actually, Nistic is going to be able to do the one for that, but it doesn't matter because El Zulu's already on Contastic. Barrack has nowhere to go. His shield's already been deleted, and now his turret's almost deleted as well, including him. The dwarf will go down. This is going to be a nice reversal, but it's not enough damage. Is the accursed arm going to be available? No, but he gets the airtime, and he cannot defend the payload. He goes down just in case you were wondering if he would stay alive, and that spawn kill, three to one. They might be turning this around. Spawn kill showing their dominance this time. We see El Zulu heading back to base on a 12 streak with 1,500 credits to his name. He's able to pick up a lot of items here. We got many, many ultimates available to him. The big note here is that Mutiny really spent a lot trying to get that defense. They have no evil mojo. They have no lockdown. They have no accursed arm. All they will have is that barrage and probably the scout coming into this next capture point fight. Whereas if we take a look over at spawn killed, we have immortal available. We have buckwild available. We have ancient rage available. We have dementia, uh, illusory rift going to be available here by the time they get to this point, and that is going to be huge if spawn killed want to close things out here. It's really going to be up, I think, to El Zulu to follow through. The plays he was hitting with those fireballs, those were some of the most impactful moments of that fight to get all of the damage dealers down. People said to me when I was actually discussing Fernando that it wasn't viable to use damage anymore, but no one has done that. No one has gone last and forward. No one has gone increase the health of your shield. Everyone is still running the damage Fernando because even though it's 50% extra instead of 100%, it's still super impactful because it goes through targets. And as we see spawn killed with the confidence they've built over winning six capture points in a row, look to take their seventh and clean this up and go ahead in the series two to one against mutiny unless something crazy can happen yeah and the big thing here is spawn kit weren't even forced into a lot of those ultimates that they have so they still have all the tools in their toolkit a nice hook from uh grapple there is going to pull sirachan into a rough spot he's going to be picked up on this barrack shuts down the accursed arm immediately prince danny there and all things spawn killed right now complete wipe team kill for spawn kill. And there's the we B for BM. Strong. There are the ultimates used. Yeah. They know that's game yeah. over. And they show that with a little bit of fun and class because they went seven in a row on those capture points. That is a big turnaround. This is what I love to see out of Paladin's action, baby. These are the games that we live for as commentators and you as viewers love to see Mutiny so close with the early advantage, yet Spawn Kill turned it around two games in a row, absolutely dominating the games after that and just taking it to Mutiny. Mystic Cutie even jumps off of the Grok, and for me, that was the big decision where they went wrong. And Grok wasn't picked up. Clearly, they had drafted in a way that they potentially needed to prioritize a damage dealer or a tank rather than being able to pick up the Grok, but it just didn't feel the same without Nistacuti on that Grok. Mackers went on to the victor, but to me, it just it wasn't necessarily that the ship was broken. It's just that they steered the wrong direction for a moment. That's, I think, the best example and metaphor I can give to this. Nistacuti, Mackers, they did great when they had Pip and Grok on their side. The healing was enough but all of a sudden just losing a few capture points in a row it just seemed like instead of really feeling uh that they were out picked i think i think the truth is they were just outplayed and needed to get back into that rhythm that's right here so we can go ahead and take a look over at this map screen right now and we see that it is going to be the salty run back here 
on Jaguar Falls again. So the reason we're seeing this is we're, we're functioning off a of map pool, basically. So we only get two map bands. So Timber Mill and Ice Mines are the banned maps for this series. Everything else is in the pool right now, and it has been loser's pick once again. So Mutiny going to elect to just run things back. And it does remind me of the tournaments of old, where we used to have all of the teams playing on this. Grapple, super excited. El Zulu, Graham, Prince Danny TV, and Rovenick almost drafting the exact same lineup here. And actually, let's go ahead. We're going to take a quick pause. We'll be right back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. And we'll see you in a sec. And we are back. It seems that we've got everything worked out on our end. And there it is. Here are the lineups for this game. We've got Kentastic on the buck. We've got Kensington on the side with Cassie. We've got Zero Chan playing Fernando instead of that Mako. We've got Mackers back on his pit, which is what we want to see in this to Cutie nice. back on the Grok. So it seems like Mutiny has made the adjustments we were talking about, went back to the comfort picks, or just what was working well for them. That's right, but their opponents today will be Rovenick. Very comfortable on this Bomb King. That's nothing to snuff at. Grapple going to be on Makoa. So dominant on it last game. Prince Five, Danny TV will four, be on that Androxus three, once again. This two, is a very comfort fix. One. El Zulu going to be on and that so Jorogos there. And rounding things out for spawn kill will be Graham, this time on Ying. Muni want to get a nice start here, but Ying, let's see how she sets up these illusions. A very loved champion, somebody that people really appreciate. She's going to get out of the fire zone from Fernando. Go back in there because she sees he's going the wrong way, and it's just so much damage going to Zero Chan. But the first blood goes on to Contastic, on to Rovenick. And so Rovenick will not have Ooh, nice the same type of pressure now. Prince Danny TV is going to snowball off of that and take down Kenjinton actually in uh, response. And so Nistacuti on the point still, and Graham here looking to contest and make sure that this is still anybody's point. Nine to four, nine to, four to 14 now. And it looks like it still is Mackers being forced off with Spawn Guild having the advantage. But it was a bit of a timid start for both teams. Yeah, Kenjiton gonna be cleaning up Prince Danny right now. 41-51 climbing is spawn killed right now with the favorable position. Kenjiton trying to break in here. We'll find a kill onto Rovenick. Macker's gonna clean up El Zulu here. Grapple able to answer back onto the front liner. Zero chance gonna fall to his hand here. Kintastic gonna answer back as well onto Graham here, taking out that healer. That's our two huge picks for Mutiny, and they are able to take things back. Mutiny looking strong again. This to Cutie. And Mackers together at last. Buddies forever. And it looks like the double healing will come out. Here's the Dragon Punch already. El Zulu is potentially going to look to take a target Ooh, down. Swap. He doesn't get anybody, though. And Grapple is and here on that side. Zero Chan is there as well. El Zulu, he's in trouble. This security is going to get pulled, but actually disengaged there, which is fantastic play. Kitchenson oh. goes down and gets the kill. This security takes down El Zulu. It's That's Grapple good. and Graham fighting each other, but it does not go that way and so now the double kill by Graham and it's all good on the side of Mutiny. Yeah, fantastic there with the double kill cleaning things up for Mutiny right now. One to zero. They lead in this fight but they are down one to two in this series so they need this game. This is their last chance right now. Both of these teams have zero wins here so both looking to get on the board for that standing screen here in the champion circuit. We'll see who it's going to be. It's very important both of these teams. Rovenick in for the King Bomb but I'm a little speechless. A little too Nick. late. I'm a little speechless because such an experienced player 
that is a very poor ult by anybody's standards. And he knows where that's going to put him. He knows the trajectory. It's not like he's never played Bomb King before. I'm just really Let's try surprised. that again. Let's try that again. Here he goes. One more time. That's right, a good ult there. there. Go. He gets three out of that for that ult. But again, just I'm surprised. It's been so hard to actually go ahead and make that happen for anyone who's been dealing with Bomb King in the circuit. I'm just surprised. Yeah. I'm really just it's tough. surprised in general. It's a tough ultimate. It takes a lot of timing no and doubt. wind up, knowledge of the maps, where you're going to go, trajectory. And it's tough because you can't really use it reactionary, right? You just kind of have right. to use it and hope that they're clumped up, hope you're going to get a lot of value. Because if you have to go rolling into a fight, you're going to get burned down like we saw Rovenik. Absolutely. And maybe because teams are so aware, they know it's such a big wind up, you could hear it happening. Maybe it needs to be used more for the single target, more like a pit bull, where you want to take a Fernando yeah, out, a use pick. it just like that. But it just seems like it's being haphazard. It, there's no yeah. method to it. And I'm not seeing a method to the madness right now. Unfortunately, even with a very skilled Bomb King player, we haven't been able to see King Bombs have as much of an impact. And so moving forward into this push, we see a lot of uh, what's been happening lately. Now with Mutiny back with Nista Cutie and Macros, they're feeling a lot more comfortable mm -hmm. together. Uh, the Pip and Grot Ultimate uh, seem to work really well synergistically, but also just in the fact that the dual healing seems to always be getting the better of spawn killed when Mutiny goes at it that way. That's right. So they will have Nista Cutie on that Grok to just be pocket healing up uh, Sierra Chan on that, that Fernando, excuse me. Uh, and then Macros on the Pip will be there kind of for, for the raid heals, keeping sure. everybody else topped up here. And we yeah. are actually... Coming out of that quick pause, they're getting back straight into the action. Now we're going to be following along with Kenjitin right now. A little bit, uh, a little bit alone right now. Uh, all of his boys in Mutiny have been killed, and he's going to be forced out of this fight for now. Has the Scout Ultimate available to him? This is good. At this moment, when they're looking to kind of get break in, where, where spawn kills all dug in, it's very important that they have the vision of where everyone's at pushing in. Yeah, absolutely. This vision is important to reveal is key. Cassie Scout's going to let her know and her Ooh, teammates ouch. know exactly where everyone is. And it looks like Spawn Killed are here looking to try and get the defense available. Grapple tries to get a grapple again. Prince Danny DB goes down to Kentastic, so Mutiny have an opportunity here. Kenjitin does go down as well, and Grapple pops into the Ancient Rage. And that's a kill going out for El Zulu. He's taking down Zero Chan and Nista Cutie. On the side of Mutiny, he's going to help get that kill. Kintastic doing a lot of work in the back line, taking down El Zulu, but Prince Danny TV shuts down the buff bald man, and he is actually going to go back to base, as well as potentially the Androxis here, as Mackers finishes him off in the air, which is no easy feat for, for a pip. Yeah, Prince Danny been a little bit quiet this round thus far there. Grapple able to find that clutch kill onto Nista Cutie. Rovenik cleaning up Mackers as well. Grapple finds Kenjitin here and spawn killed. Starting to, to, to run away with these fights there. Nice grumpy bomb there. Rovenik is just going to force all of Mutiny away. We only have 10 seconds left on the clock. And Spawn Kill don't even want to let uh, Mutiny back near this one. No, not even close. They do not want this to be any contest. They're going to throw the Fernando hook. there. 360 hook. <laughs> he talked about that a lot. We haven't mentioned it today, but why is he doing that? Uh, yeah, so the way that actually works is a lot of times you'll do the 180 hook because whenever you hook somebody as Makoa, they end up in front of you. And you do have control. Uh, of your camera turning and moving and jumping with McCall while in that hook animation. So you want to hook and turn around and kind of offer up your sacrificial lamb to your teammates, per se. So you will be able to just have full vision of them as they come around, drop them straight in front of your teammates. It just kind of helps the psychology of, hey, follow up on this target. A turtle offering a sacrificial lamb? Turtles are, you know, like vegetarians, bro. Yeah, they don't but eat that, they, where's the, oh, so they're just like offering it. They're not going to eat it. I don't want this. Well, Makoa, <laughs> I don't want this. You take this. Here, handle that. All right, well, it seems like Makoa has his own plans. Grapple, such a fitting name for this champion that he's been doing so well with. Been one of the stars of this game, absolutely on the side of uh, Mutiny. Actually, Spawn killed, I believe. And so, Rovenik and them have tried to find the answer. Spawn killed have done a great job. They've taken the set two to one. And they figured themselves out. Mutiny has let this go, but Nista uh -oh, Cutie nice and Kenjinton are trying their best to stay alive. The Immortal does come out from Fernando, and it's perfect. A five man, but there it is. Grapple staying true to his name. The double kill comes out for the Makoa, and the Turtle is looking close to that triple. He gets Mackers, and he might just have it. The triple kill, the Rampage, the Turtle with the BN showing how strong that dread shanker is man i wish i had that emote 
That is such, that's such a great cherry on top capstone to a oh my nice God. play for Makoa there. It's beautiful. Slamming down that cannon, but it will be Sirachan returning on this Fernando here. 82 points right now in favor of Spawn Kill. Here comes the Dragon Punch, but it's shut down before it's able to get off the ground. Rovenik able to answer back. Return kill onto Sirachan. Kenjitin fires back. Trading kill for kill right now is Spawn Killed and Mutiny right now. That Ancient Rage not quite available to him. Grapple might be able to get this one charged up 94% here, but the fight is almost over here. He gets taken down and Mutiny Huge. takes this one back. Huge. Mackers is here though and here's the chicken. He knows that the opportunity is strong for his team to be able to hold on to this if he's able to use this ultimate well. Looking at what we can combine it with, obviously he's got the Grok ultimate, he's got the Cassie ultimate, and he's got the Buck Wild. Nothing like the Androx's accursed arm. And look at that Grumpy Bomb perfectly thrown by Robinick to space out the teammates. They don't want to get stunned, so they run out of line of sight, but they can't leave the point. Zero Chan is really low, and here's the chicken. This is huge. He's going to take down Grapple, and that means a lot for their team. A nice Grok ult as well is going to combine to give the healing to their squad. The Grumpy Bomb will be immune, and he's actually going to get knocked off with a fire spin. And Mutiny Jeez. are going to come back and capture this one with Spawn Killed having such great pressure early on. The Chicken, the Tempest, will turn it around. That's right, but they will not have those tools available to them. Hopefully they can get them charged up before it ti comes time for conversion. But a huge hook from Grapple is going to be good on to Mackers. The follow-up is there as well. He's going to be wiped off the face of the map here. Nistakuti laying down the pressure with that long range lightning staff. Here comes the King Bomb. Is Robinick able to find anyone? He gets two. Stunned. Both kills are confirmed there. Prince Danny finds one as well in the back line on Contastic. We're just going to have to ride along back from spawn because. That is where everyone from Mutiny is. Wow, Spawn Kill doing the right thing there. Yes, obviously they have had the scenario where they've gotten this capture point, but it doesn't look, and we talked about this, what is with the impact of winning a team fight and then immediately wiping? It's awkward. It seems to happen all the time, though. And it's just like, why didn't I win the team fight before, you know? Yeah, a lot of times when those ultimates all come out, it's, it's, very, it's very telling. They're able to swing these fights very hard in their favor right now. And they're all five coming back. Here comes the Accursed Arm, but is it able to find any kills? Yes, we'll pick up Sirachan right now, but no further kills are found without a nice hook onto the buck there. We'll be able to clean him up. No, he is able to skate around the corner there. Rovenik just laying down the continued pressure with this bomb kick. No more kills right now. Just the one frontliner has fallen for Mutiny. And that frontliner not yet back in the fight. Rovenik. Looking with the poppy bomb, trying to figure out where he can pressure Kenjinton from a safe distance, but there's nowhere safe. He's got to get up close. He's got to throw these bombs onto the Cassie, but she hits too many dodge rolls, and she's got a great ability to release and get out of there. There it is. The temple from uh, the totem is going to help secure the safety of Kentastic, and now it just looks so bad. Kenjinton as well going to take down Rovenik. And it's just looking like there is no way to get past this extremely tough pressure that Spawn Kill has put on. Yeah, Spawn Kill <laughs> both times here made really great holds on defense, but slightly choking there at 99 points for them, unable to capture this one. All of Mutiny are back here, ready to answer this aggression right now in spades. Here comes one kill, that's first one of this fight. Kenjiton gonna pick up Graham. Kenjiton with a double kill, picking up Prince Danny, the Dragon Punch, trying to find the response. This is gonna be stunned out in the back line by Rovenik there, but the healing totem is so strong right now. Macker's able to find yet another kill onto Grapple. Contastic gets one, Kenjiton gets one, and Mutiny are rolling once again. Mutiny are rolling, and if they keep rolling like this, they could tie things up. Actually, in terms of the set, they're two to one up, though, in this game. Mutiny are leading. They've gone back to their comfort picks of Grok and Pip, and the Chickens and the Tempest ultimates have been so key for them staying ahead of Spawn Killed. Now, Grapple goes into the ultimate, and that Makoa is going to be dangerous, and there it is. There's the ultimate coming out from Bomb King. He wants to get it, but he has Hasn't oh, been able. There it is. Timing. He gets it. The timing is there. It's defended successfully. Spawn killed, able to defend after a push was looking super strong. And Mutiny elect to save some of their key ultimates for next round. That's right here. So taking a look at just what's available will be that Tempest. We will see the scout available to them. Not a lot on the board right now in terms of those ultimates, but just I want to talk about Rovenik's King Bomb there. Evil Mojo we're seeing is available. But that great trigger Point discipline spawned. for he just rolled into the wall until he heard that immortal go down. He did want he wanted to confirm those kills and he did just that, waiting out the immortal before triggering that king bomb here. He might have been listening and just saying, you know, they're talking about how I haven't hit these king bombs and I really need to impress. Stepping up, Rain Day and Pretty here. So he might have just taken our advice 
and gone ahead and hit a hot one there. He does really defend good. successfully, and here it is. This is what matters most right here. Can Mackers do what he needs to do with the chicken? But of course, I think it's even more important to understand, can Rappel do what he needs to do as the Makoa? There is the Drogo's oh. ultimate coming through. He's looking for it. It doesn't get anybody yet. And actually, no, it, it ends up taking down Zero Chan, and that's what's the most important aspect of this fight. The big tank is out of the way, and though El Zulu is there, he's zoning so far that is allowing him and his team, though they got taken down, to not allow any of the capture to go the way of mutiny just yet. Finally, just a second now, they're getting up to 21 points. That's right, Graham and Elzulu moving around the front side of things. We see that uh, Illusory Rift is available to spread out that kind of raid healing style from Ying right now. Grapple finds one clutch pick on a Contastic to start this fight. El Zulu answers on Sierra Chan as well. Spawn kill are answering back in spades. And you see as that's happening, Macker's getting pressured out by Rovenik. And now it looks like the Androxus is all there. He's looking to help out. It's Prince Danny TV and Rovenik looking to find their next target. They're searching around, but Nistacuti gets killed by Graham, and there is no one to even kill spawn killed finally with two to one advantage in the set looking to finally have a little bit of pressure on the point the ultimate coming out from the drogos he's gonna hit so zero good. chan again el zulu is taking out this fernando and that's twice in a row that he's been able to secure the kill onto the spanish tank and it is serving such a good purpose in allowing them to get the advantage onto this capture point and what a grumpy bomb stun he's gonna get two mackers and nistic duty gonna go down thanks to el zulu prince danny and most of all, served up on a platter by Rovenik's Bomb King. Rovenik leaving a great legacy for his team there. He was taken down, but he left the beautiful Grumpy Bomb there, and Mutiny just rotates straight back into it, capitalizing beautifully. Prince Danny just finding more and more clutch kills in this fight right now. Wrecker is online right now. He's doing a lot of damage to that Fernando shield. Rovenik will help clean that one up for him. It's looking like Spawn Killed are going to take this one here. The only one left alive is Mackers, and he's pinned to the wall by El Zulu. Oh my god, Rovenik with that crumpy bomb. That was just beautiful to see. That is the impact of a grumpy bomb. That is what happens when you don't buy resilience. Your whole game plan, which you thought was working out for you, can turn in the blink of an eye. And the objective is captured. It goes to Spawn Killed. Prince Danny TV and Rovenik are feeling good right now. That's right here, sitting on a 12 streak right now. Ultimate 66% charge, almost ready to go on that front. Kintastic gonna jump in, but Prince Danny is kept safe by the bubble right now. He'll head up into the sky here. 85% now on that ultimate. He's behind enemy lines right now, finding a couple of key shots here. Needs to hit this reversal to reset the cooldown on the nether step. He will get up into the air. Here comes the accursed arm that he's been charging up. Finds one kill with it. Finds some good damage on the Mackers. Looking to continue the aggression here. Double kill now on the Mackers here. More and more shots. Rovenik creds or steals away his triple kill. But that's all right. He's more than content to just lay into this Fernando, forcing him back. Double kill ain't bad oh, for the God the Slayer. Hook. And that's a third kill. Rovenik set, actually, uh, Grapple sets that one up for him, just keeping Fernando there. And now, of course, you see El Zulu flying in. He's trying to get a kill. He does take down Kentastic. El Zulu, talk about getting value from your ultimate. He's hit almost every one of these dragon punches. He may go down here, though. One rocket should do it, but actually, he ends up taking down Kenjinton with the help of Rovenik. That dual pressure from the blasters is a lot, especially if Kenjinton hasn't bought a blast shield. Here's the Bomb King ult, and it's going to be immune, and help to heal back to full is the Grok, taking Fernando into a better place. But look at that, Mackers. He's trying to force out the damage, but El Zulu's just too high, but Mackers actually gets there, and now Kenjinton is in trouble. Nice heal from Mackers. Nice heal from Grok as well oh, with Nistacuti, no. but there it is. The Makoa Ancient Rage. The bait is too strong. This could be it. If they finish here, this is the game. This is the set. They're zoning out. This could be all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. Spawn killed are trying to finish things off. Grapple is here. One clutch pull, and there it is. He could take down the Fernando. The Grumpy Bomb has been secured. The stun goes in. The Spanish tank, Fernando, gets taken out of the game, and it's the turtle that's on top today. Spawn killed with the victory and the set. Woo. And I want to mention, I want to shout out Prince Danny there. He lets Zero Chan get back to the point to take that hidden corner positioning. He was sitting in wait for those respawns to come out. We did hear the audio cue of the Accursed Arm. He had that lying in wait to just lay into all of the unsuspecting respawns from Mutiny. So a great zoning play that wasn't shown on screen, but definitely worth shouting out. I'm so excited about looking at these stats as well, because it, it really does tell the story of the game. It's so interesting seeing how, again, Nistacuti and Mackers 
doing a very good job. But all the time, the other games, this security had more healing than Graham, uh, more healing than Ying on the side of spawn kill, but it just ends up being that Nista Cutie wasn't able to hit that mark this same time around. Mackers wasn't able to be as effective in terms of healing as he wanted to be. Kensington did damage, carried the team, quite honestly, with 31 and 14 and two solo kills on a nine streak with 75k, but it just wasn't enough to finish off and compete with El Zulu's 119,000 damage. Prince Danny TV's 105,000 damage. And more importantly, the stat that should be displayed that I think might be higher than any number on this uh, scoreboard is the amount of hooks landed. Yeah, I think Rappel no might kidding, be at 106,000. Yeah. He might he might be beating Prince Danny TV in that one. So, I mean, one of your favorite champions. Definitely. He, he made the difference. Definitely. He, one really big thing I want to shout out to Grapple is he was able to hit that hook on the Fernando. And this is a really, it's a strong counter that's like not, not a lot of people are aware of. If you hook Fernando, it drops his shield and it goes on cooldown. He was able to find that. And it's very important because he was not able to stall the payload in time for his respawns, which, uh, you know, mind you, were covered by Prince Danny, who right. was hiding out in that corner with the accursed arm. Yep. Ready to roll there. But just beautiful mechanical play all around. It was a beautiful play. I mean, he caught the right gotta opponents. You got to love the feeling of Dredge anchoring yeah. somebody. And the competitive <laughs> so atmosphere, it's so hard when you have so many good teammates ready to follow up on that damage. So shout-outs to him. I wonder who will make it on Nick's pick this week. That's right. If we'll see another mm. turtle, I don't know. I, I it's, it's I can't a, show too much favor to the turtle. Can't I love show McCall. too much favor to the it. turtle. Otherwise, we'll see a turtle every weekend. So stay tuned <laughs> for that. We did start a show called Paladins Esports Weekly that you'll be seeing us weekly recapping all of the esports. So if you didn't see last week, you can check it out on the YouTube. And also, if you want to check out this week, maybe you're just joining up to the broadcast, we will be covering all the stuff that uh, happened uh, this weekend. And it was very, very exciting. For sure. So keep an eye out. For episode number two here, we can take a quick look back, in fact, right now at just how this series went. Uh, Mutiny taking out, coming out swinging here, 4-2, to two, taking that first game here. A lot of Temple Ruins maps coming out here, but Spawn killed, able to take things back three in a row for them here. And they will take their place on the standings. They are now on the board. We got a nice little... Uh, Nice little inverse here. We got three and zero for Match Point, two and one for Eager, one and two for Spawn Killed, and zero and three, unfortunately, for the boys of Mutiny. So that's going to wrap things up for us today. And obviously, Mutiny, after having a really successful chance, I mean, Spawn Killed Mutiny. I want to see them play again. They go zero and three, unfortunately. Yeah. But they had a really good showing, and that game was very tight. And Spawn Killed seemed to find a rhythm that Mutiny had and lost and couldn't get back. However. I think that that could have gone either way. It just Definitely. depended on, you know, kind of, I think, Mutiny dropping the pip, dropping the grok, trying a different strategy when I don't know if it was really broken in the first place. Yeah. It'll be really interesting to see these two teams face off against each other. And, of course, next week's going to determine so much. A lot of swing games will be happening to see Definitely. whether Eager and Match Point can stay at the top, whether Spawn Kill can find themselves another win with Rovenick, Prince Danny TV, and Grapple showing some yeah. incredible plays and showing that they deserve to be here. And we'll see if Mutiny can find their first victory and maybe upset of the bigger dogs. That's right. All of that will be broadcast at the same time, same place here on twitch.tv slash Paladins Game at 3 p.m. Eastern. Keep an eye out for uh, for Esports Weekly Episode 2, though. Oh, yeah. Coming this week. That's coming as well. We hope to see you all here next time. We'll be announcing the giveaway winners in just a bit, so stay tuned if you want to see that. You don't have to be here. We'll already decide you an email or Twitter you. Make sure that you get all that cool stuff. Got some Viking Kinesis skins and some crystals for you Paladins lovers. And sure. make sure to stay tuned tomorrow and throughout the week we have myself pretty hair streaming we have a daily 24 7 stream that goes on that allows you to see palin's gameplay anywhere so whether it's a pro whether it's a community member here at high res like one of us or if it's somebody else you'll be able to check out some cool palin's gameplay here so make sure you follow keep it locked and as always we'll see you next week peace